chat and help me welcome Alexander Pagani. How are you doing tonight, bro? I'm doing excited. I'm excited uh, to be here. And I am absolutely ecstatic about what God is going to do today to all of your viewers. Tonight, and I'm saying this as a prophetic decree, as we initiate tonight, is this. Everyone who's been suffering in the area of your dreams, tonight you're going to sleep well. And God is going to give you a prophetic dream tonight. I'm telling you, we're going to pray for God to break these night terrors, these night demons. Mm. And I'm telling you, and I told Isaiah, I said, we're going to decree that God would speak to those that are watching today, tonight in a dream. And that tomorrow morning that they would reach out to him, reach out to you and testify about the dream. So that next week he can spend a small segment just releasing what God is going to do. So I want everybody that's watching tonight to be in great expectation because your subconscious is going to get set free. The area of your imaginations are going to get set free. The dip, the deep recesses of your soul, the area where God speaks to you is going to get set free. And tonight you're going to sleep well and you're going to have rest. I release Sabbath rest upon every mind that tonight your insomnia is going to go. Tonight sleep paralysis is going to jump Come out on. the window. Demons choking you out at three o'clock in the morning. Shadows running up and down the hallways of your house. They're going to leave tonight. I decree that. I prophesy that. And I also establish it by the authority of the courtroom of heaven. Tonight's your night to get delivered. So you want to stick around. God is going to do some great things. Come on man i'm fired up and i honestly think when you wrote me this last week i don't think that we could be doing this at a better time than right now when our nation is in distress i know many of you know it's been a crazy week i'm in california and they've re-shut down the churches and i want to tell you guys something i'm not going to tell you what most pastors are going to tell you we as the body of christ right now and i'm not going to try to get all crazy here but we need to start realizing guys less than one percent of your time is spent at church and i want to say this boldly tonight i hope you know this that you can still be a Christian if your church is temporarily having services online. I hope by all of our murmuring, I hope by all of our complaining, I hope by all of our calling Gavin Newsom the devil this week that we're not sending a message to the world, oh I feel the Holy Ghost, that we don't know how to be Christian the other 99.9% of our lives. Think about this, you're in church for 1% of your week and by all of our complaining and whining about why we're not allowed to gather, we're telling the world we don't know how to be believers for 99% of the week. The reason a lot of people are mad right now, and I'm just going to say this, Alexander Pagani, as we're in the middle of a storm right now in America, the reason why so many of you are mad that your church is shut down is because the only time you're even a Christian is on Sunday morning. And what happens is if you take away the Sunday morning religion or the meeting, then you no longer have anything in your life to identify you as a believer. But guess what, friend? I'm not just a believer on Sunday morning. I'm a believer on Sunday afternoon. I'm a believer on Monday night. I'm a believer on Tuesday night. I'm a believer on Wednesday night. I'm belie- I'm a believer on Thursday night. The days of us murmuring about just our Sunday morning service has got to end. Right now, we need to rise up as the body of Christ. We need to stop crying and calling all the government the devil. Persecution, this is not persecution. This is a pandemic. Remember, persecution is when our religious beliefs are being attacked. So that means if there was no virus, would they shut the churches? down and the answer is no so that's that can't be persecution we need to rise up i want to tell somebody you can still live holy you can still pray you can be still filled with the power and the spirit of almighty god we as the body of christ are not defined by meeting for an hour on sunday morning we are defined by the resurrection power of christ that is living on the inside of us and it is time for somebody to break out of the murmuring i'm telling you murmuring and gossiping is an open door to demonic spirit And we have opened up the floodgates as the body of Christ by demonizing the government 
by demonizing the church down the road by being divided there is a massive divided right now and it's time that we get back to preaching the word it's time that we get equipped to break the demonic powers of the enemy it's time that we get equipped to raise the dead to preach the gospel now's not the time to be preaching politics to be preaching all your dreams all your visions now's the time to preach the word of god paul said timothy you need to preach the word it's the word of god that breaks demonic power it's the word of god that sets the captives free tonight we're going to be giving you some scriptures that are going to break demonic power in your dreams and in your sleep and in your imagination i'm telling you guys right now i know they're shutting churches down but they'll never shut down the true church of jesus christ now is our defining hour i'm telling you guys what god has allowed this pandemic to do is he's confronted our churchianity come on not Christianity, he's confronting our churchianity and our fundamentalism. There's a difference between true kingdom and American fundamentalism, or what we would believe to be America's version of Christianity as opposed to the real kingdom. You wanna know why? Mm. Because the real church is found in where two or three. Come Did on. you catch that revelation? The real church is found where two or three. What he's confronted is our churchianity, which means our buildings, our programs, you know, our grants and our loans. And those things are great. What God has confronted is our churchianity. And he's gotten us back to the place of resurrecting family altar, prayer time, spending time in the word, fasting again. Come on. Uh, speaking life into our children, true repentance, preaching nothing but the second coming of Christ, uh, repentance from sin, true holiness. That is what God is confronting. He's confronting that. And he, and, and another thing, um, he is also showing us where we are, where the body of Christ is, and so that we can come back to him. So that's what God is doing. And I agree that this season is not persecution. And I've been saying mm. this at my church. This season is reformation. Come on. We are in a season of real reformation not revolution because there's a difference between revolution and reformation revolution is against the system but they don't rebuild nothing else they just mm. destroy the system god is not against the church he can't be against the church because the holy spirit is not against something he established Come on. what he is against is church programs and all this churchianity stuff that we do in the church and you can read this in the book of revelation and, and he wrote seven letters addressing not the church itself but address how we do church so mm. jesus is confronting how we do church getting us back to the place where we're having real authentic church so what is he doing he is not causing a revolution that is why i don't believe those that say that god is removing the church so that we could just have church in the homes that's not what god is doing god is re-establishing he is causing a revival back of us having home services but he is not removing church the edifice or the gathering of the saints together you want to know why because who are you going to prophesy to if you're having church in your house come on, you come on. To your family over and over again why would he deposit the gifts of the spirit so that you could just repeat yourself to your children over no he given us the gifts of the spirit so that we can begin to minister to the body of christ collectively and we do that also in a church building so what does he do he's not causing a revolution destroy the system he is causing a reformation which means he is turning around the system within the building and that way when we go back and let me tell you this when we go back to the church nothing will ever be the same again but things will eventually get back to normal mm. let me say that again the church nothing will ever be the same again but things will eventually get back to normal except that that normal will be the new normal or the new reformation which means when you reform it you cannot unreform it did you catch it mm. so that's what god is, that's what god is doing and how he is doing that is that he is dealing with us in our hearts and in our minds and one of those areas is he is speaking to the body of christ in the area of your dreams mm. and i think right now one of the things i feel like is happening and i need a lot of you to listen to me, us very closely tonight because the reason why so many of you say isaiah i've never wrestled until recently i've never fought demonic things until recently i've never done this the lord you know when this whole thing broke out and all of you know we have a lot of preacher friends as we travel and preach and everyone's picking a side and the lord told me this alexander he said be very careful when you pick a side because you might find yourself 
by fighting a battle I didn't authorize you to fight. When you begin to take sides, you begin to fight battles that the Lord did not authorize you and you end up fighting his church. You end up fighting other believers. Now is not the time to spend our energy fighting other believers. Now is the time to put our energy on the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has taken off the gloves. They've turned the heat up and it's time for the church to do that. You open yourself up to demonic powers when you start trying to bring division and you try to prove everybody right. I've lost track, Alexander, of how many times I've wrote a Facebook status of me trying to prove everybody wrong when it comes to everything going on. And the Lord has said, delete that. I did not authorize you to say that. I did not authorize you to type that because all that's going to do is cause division. I was reading today in Joshua 5. Joshua was near Jericho and the Bible says an angel stands in front of Joshua with a sword in his hand and Joshua has one question for the angel. He says, are you on my side or are you on the enemy side? And the angel's response was, I'm on neither side. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. This is the side that we need to begin to take. I'm not on the side of the church down the road. I'm not on the side of the church that wears masks. I'm not on the side of the church that doesn't wear a mask. I'm not on the side of the church that goes online. I'm not on the side of the church that gathers. I am choosing to be on the Lord's side and I'm done letting everybody else's political opinions, everybody else's prophetic words, everybody else's prophetic dreams try to dictate and try to manipulate how I'm going to live my life because I'm telling y'all, if you live your life on a spiritual roller coaster, you will be exhausted. As a kid, and and David Diga totally preached this Sunday, I'm stealing this from him, but as a kid, I hated going on roller coasters. And this is what we'd, I'd always do, Alexander, when we go to Six Flags, my parents would take us to Great America. I, I refuse to go on roller coasters, so I'd always say this, I'll just meet you at the exit. I'll just wait. All of you guys can ride the roller coaster, and I'm just going to wait for you to get off, and I'll be at the exit when you get off. And I'm telling some of you right now, you need to begin to tell your friends. You need to begin to tell your family. You need to begin to tell your, your wife and husband, I'll meet you at the, at the exit. I'm not going on that roller coaster. I'm not going up, and I'm not going down. I refuse to be on an emotional roller coaster right now. I refuse right. to be up and down, back and forth. I'm going to be consistent in my spiritual life. I'm going to be consistent in my faith. I'm going to keep my right. mouth shut. I'm done arguing with everybody on social media. Come on, somebody needs to hear this. I'm going to keep my mouth shut, and I'm going to stand on the Word of God. We need to be preaching the Word of God right now during this assault right. that's been happening in the spirit realm. And you know this, and I want to open and say this, there is an all-out assault breaking out in the spiritual realm. This is why some of you say, why do you guys keep talking about casting out demons? Some of you say, why is it every single week? I'll tell you why. We don't just get on here because we're bored. We get on here because we feel the Lord saying, this is what the body of Christ needs in this hour. The body of Christ needs to break the witchcraft off of them. They need to break the night terrors off of them. They need to break the demonic assignments off of them. It is time for true biblical deliverance in the body of Christ. And this is what we're teaching you tonight. We're going to talk about this uh, the devil attacking at night. Now, Alexander, this is, seems to be as one of the most common times that the enemy likes to attack the believer. We know that the enemy, guys, is always looking for a way into the believer. And this is one thing. If the devil cannot get in during the day, you better believe he's going to try to do it at night. So understand, night terrors are real. And the Bible reminds us in Psalms 91.5, do not fear the terrors of the night. So there is terrors of the night, and there's definitely something about sleeping and about nighttime where the enemy begins to try to attack and invade people's lives. You know, um, the Bible says, or rather, um, one of the signs that we are living in the end time is the prophecy that the prophet Joel said. Let me Let me read it to you. So let's kind of like, jump into this thing so that that way people can understand why has there been a sudden increase in the Mm. area of dreaming well very simple look what it says joel chapter 2 very famous and well-known prophecy concerning those of us that have the pentecostal experience well look what it says joel chapter 2 verses 28 and 29 it says and i'm reading from the new living translation but you guys kind of know it um in the king james version but it says then after doing all of these things i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and this says your sons and daughters shall prophesy and that's where pretty much the church stops we stops at 
part of the verse where it says your sons and daughters shall prophesy, which means that there has been, as there should be, a heavy emphasis on the prophetic mantle being released, which we have seen and which we are living in currently. But the verse doesn't stop there, guys. The verse continues to say that your sons and daughters, they will prophesy, which means that they will be in the end time or during that particular dispensation, that there will be a prophetic release, which, so the prophetic release is an indication that we are in the end times. All right. So that's what the verse is saying, that when you begin to see your sons and daughters prophesying, just know that we have begun the end times. And that happened on the day of Pentecost. But the verse continues to say, your old men shall dream dreams. So, so watch this. So dreaming is connected to the end times. Now watch this. This is how you know how far along we are in the end times wow. and the dreaming wow. increases. Wow. Let me say that again. Okay, so if you go from having one dream a month where God was speaking to you and that and that is that was the normal, then you know that uh, we are... Um, in the process of the end time, but when God is giving the church and those of you that are that are that are watching me, let me say this and let me address another. St let me address churchianity when it comes to dreams. Whoever made up the phrase, "Oh, it was just the pizza that you ate last night," come on, is going to have to answer to God for that statement because God has been speaking to many of you throughout the years and to the church throughout the years. And every time someone brings up, oh, pastor, I had a dream. Oh, youth pastor, I had a dream last night. Or oh, uh, a Sunday school teacher, I had a dream. What's the first thing that they say? Oh, you gotta be careful. It might be the mm. pizza that you ate last night. And that phrase single-handedly has been fighting and deactivating, actually working contrary to Joel, Chapter two, when it says that as the end times progress, there will be an increase, an increase of what? Of dreaming. But watch this. The dreamings are not coming from pizza or Come emotion on. because the verse says they're coming from me pouring out my spirit. Mm. So when there is an increase of dreaming, when there is an increase of prophecy, when there is an increase of the gifts of the spirit being released upon the church, it is not because people are looking to be opportunistic. It is not because people uh, just want to grab a mic. And it's not because people uh, are dealing with some sort of abandonment or, or some rejection and they feel like um, what they do like, helps them solidify their identity. No, the Bible is very clear. Heaven is very clear. It says in those days when people start dreaming, just know, know what? I'm pouring out my spirit. It's my spirit being poured out. So I want to talk to somebody that's watching me. You're not crazy. It's not emotion. It's not the pizza that you ate last night. You are having encounters with the spirit and God has been pouring out his spirit upon you while you sleep. And that is why the devil has Come been on. acting up. Because when God begins to pour out his spirit in the house, the rats, the roaches, the spiders yes. begin to manifest. Why? Very simple. Because they've been there so long. But when the, but when the, when the aroma and the smoke of his presence begins to fill the house, there's nothing left but to do what? To, to expose that which is there. It pushes it out. So I'm here to tell you that those of you that have been having demonic dreams, you know, uh, uh, encountering some sort of spiritual attack, some of you watching me, you've been dealing with astral projection, like your body's coming out of it. It's, it, it, well, some of you, it's because you've been messing with some witchcraft. We'll <laughs> deal with that a little bit. We'll deal with that a little bit later. But that is not the case. It's because God has been trying to get your attention. God has been pouring out his, you just finished praying and fasting saying, God, use me. God, speak to me. God, use me. God, speak to me. So guess what? God's greatest place to speak to his people individually is when you're sleeping. You want to know mm. why? Because it's the only place that Jezebel can't control. Come on, come on. It's the only place that your Sunday school teacher with there, it was the pizza that they ate last night, 
can't control. You want to know why he hasn't been talking to you at the church building? You want to know why you haven't been receiving great counsel from the very people that you've been asking? Well, first of all, they can't tell you what they did, what they themselves don't know mm. because they've been spending most of the time in churchianity. Okay. Also, you God can't use them to speak to you because they keep deactivating every time you come up to them with your spiritual activity. So the verse here is actually saying that the more prophetic utterances that are released, more dreams that you have is two things happening. It's one, we are crash course heading into the increase of the end of days, which means we're more in the end than where we were 10 years ago. And second is because God is pouring more out of his spirit upon those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So let me say this. Those of you that are watching, I want you to lift your hands and I break the spirit of religion off of you now in the name of Jesus. I break the fear of man off of you now in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of doubting your dreams off of you now in the name of Jesus. Misunderstanding your dreams, I break it off of you now in the name of Jesus. And I also break the spirit of Eli. Eli, because many of you are Samuel, and you're going to an Eli saying, I'm hearing God, I'm hearing God, and all they're doing is rebuking you, all they're doing is sitting you Come down on. or sending you to bed. I'm here to tell you, God is saying, I'm the one talking to you. So the next time God speaks to you, and he's going to speak to you tonight, what you're going to respond, those of you that are watching me, is, here I am, oh Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. Come on, and I think, I was just thinking as you were saying that so many times, we don't listen to God throughout the day. We are so distracted with all the noises, whether it's the media, whether it's the husband, whether it's the wife, whether it's the kids, and God is trying to speak, and we're so distracted by everything going on, it takes us being asleep. Now, people, you have to understand, when we're talking about night terrors and dreams and encounters at night, your spirit does not go to bed. So what you need to realize is just because the flesh man is sleeping, the spirit is still wide awake throughout the night. This is why the Bible says the Lord will speak to men in the midnight hour or men at night and this is why the enemy attacks people at night you know i was thinking right. alexander samson is a perfect example of getting attacked while he sleep i think a lot of us have this uh, picture of samson being this buff guy but here's what most people don't know now i like this because i'm a skinny guy is that samson was small he was not this but this big buff guy and if he was delilah would have never wondered where his strength come from why would she be saying samson where do you get your strength if samson was all ripped out at the gym every day it had nothing to do with natural strength he had a spiritual strength and and Delilah's mm. harassing him. Some of you have come under demonic harassment. Tonight we break demonic harassment in Jesus' name. There is one thing you need to know about the spirit of Delilah that attacks you at night, that attacks you in your sleep, is that the spirit of Delilah harasses you until you get too tired to fight back. So every night you're having these lustful dreams, and then you get to a place where you say, I'm so tired of fighting these, I'm going to give in to them. That is the demonic spirit of Delilah. I've encountered the spirit of Delilah doing deliverance is. She is a spirit of yes, compromise. She's a spirit of complacency. Yes, but also she is a nighttime spirit that it comes and attacks those that have been anointed and called for consecration at nighttime. And she wants them to give in until they finally lose their strength until they finally tell her what she wants. So, so Delilah is nonstop harassing Samson. Well, when he's about to sleep, she's wondering, what is it, Samson? Cause she's getting ready to attack him in his sleep. Y'all Delilah doesn't attack people in the day. She's a spirit that comes out at night. Okay. So now Delilah's asking, asking, asking. Samson finally gives Delilah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Samson finally gives Delilah the answer to his strength, but Delilah is powerless to do anything until Samson goes to sleep. So now Delilah knows how to defeat Samson, but she can't touch him until he's sleeping. She knows in the daytime, he's too strong, he's too witty, and he's too spiritually aware. But she knows that when he's sleeping, now's her moment to take advantage. Yes, we're gonna talk about the spirit of incubus. Some of you are asking in the chat. Now she knows, and the Bible says that Samson slept on her lap while he's asleep the enemy shaves his head i'm telling you right now i believe because the american church has fallen asleep we have allowed the enemy to come in and cut off our convictions 
cut off our power, cut off our message, cut off our anointing, cut off the holiness. And because he lost his hair, he lost his God-given strength. I prophesy over some of you that feel tired, that feel weary. I prophesy over some of you men that say, Isaiah, I don't have the strength to pray. I don't have the strength to fast. I don't have the strength to lead my family. I don't have the strength to go to work. Some of you keep waking up tired and you don't understand that's the Delilah spirit that's been stilling your rest. You know, Alexander, oftentimes when I pray for people, the Lord will show me that there's an actual demonic spirit that's been stilling their rest. Some of you, come on, let, type one in the chat if you know what I'm saying. There's 1,500 of you live right now watching. Some of you say, Isaiah, I sleep for 15 hours and I wake up exhausted. That is not because you have some condition. That is that spirit, that demonic power of Delilah that is trying to wear you down and get you tired. And tonight we are going to pray at the end a prayer to break every demonic spirit that attacks you at night. What you need to understand about the demonic is there specific spirits that will only come at right. night and try to manifest and try to take advantage of you. Now, the reason, now, now watch this. Now, for those of you that are watching, I know you want to get into all of the, all of the incubus, succubus, you know, paralyzing spirit, insomnia, demons. We're going to address all of that. We, we, we're leading our, we're leading our way there. What we're trying to do is establish uh, the importance of you taking serious or putting within your worldview the severity of understanding that the battle, the spiritual battle continues to rage when you go to sleep. Now, the reason why this is so important is because, very simple, is this, is by the time you hit 70 years old, and you could go look this up, a human, a human being would have spent a third of their life sleeping. By the time you hit 70, like you could just look up the statistics on this, which means by the time you become older and they look back at how many hours you have slept as a human being, they have calculated that it is approximately maybe about 20 years of sleeping, which means this is 20 years of God trying to talk to you and 20 wow. years of you being attacked or in the middle of warfare. That is why the Bible says in Psalm 121 that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Wow. And he that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Why? Why is they saying this? Well, very simple. Very simple. Because by the time you hit a certain age, a third of your life would have been literally sleeping. And that is the realm where God or the most spiritual activity was happening, was happening the most. Now watch this. Now watch this. For those of you that feel, well, I don't remember my dreams or God doesn't speak to me in my dreams. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to read something to you. And then I'm going to tell you which demon is there. Cause there are dream blocking demons and dream catching demons, which mean demons that snatch up your dream after you had it and dreams that block you from actually having it. And we're going to tell you where that come from. And hopefully you'll be able to get delivered today. And I believe that you will. But watch this. For those that feel, because there is a sense of rejection and abandonment with people who say, well, God doesn't speak to me in dreams. So he speaks good. to everybody else, but he doesn't speak to so me. Good. Well, watch this. Look at what Job 33, verse 14 through 18 says. Look what it says. Job 33 Verse 14, it says, for God speaks again and again. Now understand that phrase again and again is where we get from glory to glory. Did you catch that revelation? The Bible says God speaks again and again. In the New Testament, it says from glory to glory. It also says from faith to faith. And it's also what Jesus said, verily, verily, which means God is trying to repeat himself the mouth of two witnesses and look what it says for god speaks again and again though most people do not recognize it he speaks in dreams say it say look it the verse, here is saying. the verse here is saying that he speaks again and again it says though people do not recognize it he speaks in dreams in visions of the night and deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn 
from doing wrong. He keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wow. The Bible is actually saying that while you sleep, God is protecting you from death. God is protecting you from your own pride. God is protecting you from calamity of the future. But the Bible says most people don't recognize it. So wow. for those of you, step, for those of you that are watching me, in your deliverance is you have to repent for dishonoring the Holy Spirit all these years with your immature comments of God speaks to everybody, doesn't speak to me. God, you don't love me because you don't speak to me in a dream. God, why is it that I never dream? God, why is it that I never dream? Let me tell you something. Verse here is telling us God speaks to you again and again, but it says most people don't recognize it. You want to know why? You don't recognize it? Because these silly, lukewarm, Willy Wonka pastors and teachers keep telling us it's the pizza that we ate last night. So guess what? Every time you dream, you keep thinking it's pizza. You know how much God had to be dealing with pizza parties in heaven because he's been trying to talk to the church, but we keep giving him a pizza party. Well, guess what? God has been speaking to you. You go to your church, you go to your pastor, and they keep saying it's the pizza. They keep saying, listen, you need to get delivered from these romper room, Willy Wonka, Chuck E. Cheese ministers who don't know how to hear God speaking in the night, who can't understand the language of God writing on the wall like Daniel. You need to find yourself a man or woman of God who is able to interpret like Daniel and at least help you make sense. At least Eli had sense to tell Samuel, the next time you hear God speak, tell the Lord, here I am. Speak for your servant is listening. Look what the verse says. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says he speaks. He says he speaks again and again. But most people don't realize it. Wow. So step number one is to understand that God is speaking all along. Let me help some of you go back and pick up that dream that your dream snatching demon told you to throw away because you said, ah, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was the Netflix that I watched last night. And we're going to deal with that a little bit later. But what we need to establish is this, is that God is speaking more in dreams than the devil is speaking. But I tell you this, when, when we don't pay attention, when God speaks to us in the dream, we open wide the door to the devil to come in and eventually they start blocking or they start snatching. Watch this. Watch this. Let me read another verse for you. And then Isaiah, you could, you could kind of jump in because I want to get to the part of why am I having wacky dreams? Mm. Why am I having weird dreams? Why am I having dreams of stabbing somebody? Why am I having dreams of having uh, sexual intimacy with an old boyfriend? Uh, am I going to go back to my old boyfriend? No. But what God is trying to tell you is you're picking up an old habit again. Mm. Let me tell you something. When you have a dream that you're having intimacy or you're smoking a cigarette or smoking a weed or drinking something of what you used to do in the world, it does not mean you're going back to that. What God is trying to tell you is you are picking up old habits that he delivered you from a long time ago. And it, the habit is not the weed smoking or whatever it is. What he is saying is it could be whatever he told you that he wanted you to get free from. You're starting to do that again. But let me read this. Let me read this for you. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Job chapter, uh, Job chapter four. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. It says, Job chapter four, verse 12, verse 16 says, this truth was given to me in secret. That's this. As though whispered in my ear, it came to me in a disturbing vision at night. This is Job talking about, this is Job chapter four. Job chapter four is the beginning of Job's trial. <laughs> May I freely say that since COVID pandemic hit the U.S. and hit the world. Many of you have been dreaming. Many of you, God has been trying to talk to you. Many of you are Job right now. Now watch this. Look what it says. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says, this truth was given to me in secret as though whispered in my ear. It came to me in a disturbing vision at night. 
and people are in deep sleep. Fear gripped me. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This means Job was not having a godly dream. Job was having a demonic dream. You know how I know it was a demonic dream that was not of the flesh? Because that's something else. Look what it says. Fear gripped me. Now, this is how you know that it was demonic. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Look at this. It said, fear gripped me and my bones tremble. And look what it says. A spirit. A second. It says, a spirit swept past my face and my hair stood on end a spirit up but i couldn't see its shape and there was a form before my eyes in silence i heard a voice speak now watch this job was not encountering the holy spirit job was in the beginning of his trial and because he was in the beginning of his trial, the courtroom of heaven gave the devil access. Mm, I'm feeling this thing. The Bible says that the God of heaven said, I give you permission to attack Job, but you can't kill him. Mm. So guess what was happening? Job was in the beginning of his trial. And guess what? He fell asleep and a demon came in his room. The Bible says fear gripped him. It says out of nowhere, he got fearful. And the Bible says his hair stood on end. And it says a spirit was walking around in his room. A spirit, it says a spirit was walking around in his room. And then watch this. The spirit first was pacing. It was pacing, trying to get his attention. It was terrorizing Job. It was intimidating Job. It was causing Job to have a a nightmare. And, And he was waiting to see if Job would pay attention. And finally, when Job woke up, he thought, he said, he thought that it was only a dream. And when he woke up, there was a demon in his room. There was, the Bible says there was a spirit standing in front of him and fear gripped him. And if you read the chapter, the verse goes on to describe what the demon actually told him. Well, what was it? What was in his room? Very simple. A demon of fear, a demon of panic, a demon of anxiety. Demon was attacking him in the night. Why? Because the devil had been given legal access to attack him. And maybe some of you that are dreaming all of these demonic dreams, Today, we're here to tell you that it's because there is an entryway somewhere in you. There is an open door somewhere in you. And God, the Holy Spirit, wants to confront that today. But this is nothing new. What you're experiencing is nothing new. The Bible says that Job was not only going through a trial in the physical, he was being attacked by demons demons late at night. So for those of you that are being attacked by demons, you're not going crazy. Hello, Job. Hello, Job. The enemy has been attacking you, but the end of Job's story, you already know the end of Job's story. Job eventually gets delivered, and today you're going to get delivered as well. Come on. I was thinking about while you're saying that Matthew 13 said that the farmer sows the good seed, and then he goes to sleep, and the enemy comes and sows bad seeds while he sleeps a lot of times what i've come to find doing deliverances is that people will say isaiah i was fine yesterday and i don't know what happened but i woke up the next day if it's after deliverance it's before and i feel a certain way i've have emotions i've never had before i've had thoughts i've never had before what you need to understand it's while we sleep the enemy tries to come while we're vulnerable the farmer can't defend his property how many know if the enemy came while the farmer was awake the any en- the farmer would fend off his property and say no you're not planting that in my mind you're not planting 
having that in my marriage. Mm. And I'm going to tell you here in a minute, guys, how the enemy can even get in, into our marriages while we sleep. But you have to understand that the enemy comes and tries to sow while we sleep. This is why when Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, you need to understand the enemy is asking for you. The enemy is targeting you. And understand Peter. And by the way, guys, we have 1,700 viewers. We're at an all-time high. Praise the Lord. This is the most viewers we've ever had live at 1.1700. Praise God. Share it. Let's get to 2,000 tonight. But here's what you have to understand. He said, Peter, listen, I didn't tell the devil he can't have you. I didn't tell the devil he can't have access. I'm praying for you, Peter, that your faith would not fail. Now, understand when Jesus is out, pray, out dealing with God about going to the cross, the Bible says that Jesus told the disciples to pray and watch. And the Bible says when Jesus came back, the disciples were asleep. And Jesus says, why did, basically Jesus says, why didn't you guys stay up? Understand why was Jesus so frustrated that they went to sleep? Because he knew that if they were asleep, they were vulnerable to a demonic attack. And Peter, the Ooh. devil's been already targeting you. And instead of oh watching God. your post and staying up and praying, see some of you, the problem is you're staying up late till two, three in the morning, watching Netflix, watching things that bring honor and glory to darkness. And you're giving the devil an access point right before bed. I think Vlad said it last week when we were talking about spiritual warfare, he said, you should not be on your phone an hour before you go to bed because understand that you're opening up spiritual doors. And then when you go to sleep, you're vulnerable to attacks of the enemy. And one thing you need to understand now, there's some of you watching right now and you say, Isaiah, I've been getting attacked at night. I've been having dreams of adultery. I've been having dream. We hit 1800. Praise the Lord. I've been having dreams of lust. I've been having dreams of this. I don't understand it. Let me tell you something. A lot of you go to churches where they don't believe in the demonic. You go to churches where they don't preach on deliverance. A lot of you are in denial. And by the way, denial is not just a river in Egypt. Okay, some of you will get that later. A lot of you are in denial into thinking you don't need deliverance. Well, here's why you're having these attacks at night. You don't realize <laughs> that all day long, you suppress the idea that you're being demonized, okay? All day long, you suppress the idea that you have a demon of anger. You suppress the come idea on. that you have a spirit of lust. You, you will not come to grips with the fact that you need deliverance. You cannot get deliverance until you come to the fact that you need deliverance. That's why the man of the tombs wow. came to Jesus and got on his knees. He recognized he needed deliverance. Understand, so all day long, this is what happens, you're suppressing. I don't need deliverance, I don't need breakthrough, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, Christians can't be demonized there's no way i can have a demon you you suppress it well here's the problem you can't suppress it at nighttime because that carnal man that keeps telling you you don't need deliverance is dead asleep and guess what happens <clears throat> that spiritual battle that's been going on all day long you just suppress it every day of anger of depression of anxiety of lust of adultery of all the uh -huh. issues you're going through they start manifesting at night all of a sudden you have spirits of anger attacking you go i don't know why every night i'm having attacks i i've talked recently alexander to probably 10 to 15 people that are great people in the last month that have all said i've been getting choked i've been getting attacked what they did not realize is they actually needed deliverance but you have to understand the man there's a manifestation happening that's been there you've just hidden it or you've suppressed I it and now it's being revealed same thing as Alexander was saying, many times when you have dreams, you know, I remember when I first got saved, I was with a girl for four years. I kept having nonstop dreams of her. Listen up very closely. If you've been having nonstop dreams of an ex-girlfriend, you may have been married for 10 years. It doesn't matter. You've been having nonstop dreams of an ex-girlfriend or somebody specifically that you slept with. Okay. Sexual relations create soul ties. If you've been having nonstop mm -hmm. dreams, a lot of times that is a revelation or a revealing that there's an unhealthy soul tie. So I kept having this reoccurring dream. She was in my dreams every Every night I could not get this ex-girlfriend out of my dreams I started having not just dreams of her but any girl that I had been with sexually before marriage I was having dreams about and this was when I first got saved I was with you know different girls in that party lifestyle and the Lord began to say Isaiah there is demonic soul ties that you have with them you've not renounced you've not repented of you've not broken any of the soul ties and those soul ties do not go away because you go to sleep all day long you're suppressing the feelings and the emotions towards those uh. girls and you don't know you don't think about them but when you're mm -hmm. sleeping those begin to manifest in your dreams so guess what i did i not only begin to text asking for forgiveness from some of these girls that i had that i had slept with and party with but i begin to go down the line and renounce and repent and break every soul tie Here's why those negative dreams were positive. I'll tell you why. Because if it had not been for those negative dreams, 
10 years would have gone by, I would have been married and I would have been having lustful thoughts towards people said, where did these come from? So the bad dreams actually revealed to me soul ties that need to be broken. Some of you keep having those dreams and some, not all the time, but some of it is a result of God actually letting you have those dreams to reveal a demonic soul tie that needs to be oh, broken I'm... by the blood of Jesus. So don't freak out and Jesus. say, I don't know why I'm having this. If I start having lustful dreams, you know what I do? I start saying, okay, is there any lust in my heart? Is there any lust demons trying to get an access point or trying to find a door? Because demons oftentimes will look for open doors while you sleep because it's easier when you're not on guard that's why over and over i can give you verse after verse of the enemy coming what about the wise virgins what about the foolish virgins the bible says they slept when the master came back so we're going to see parallels of sleep over and over not just demons attacking Jesus. you at night but over and over the enemy coming at night when you're vulnerable that's why paul says you need to wake up by the way we just hit 1900 praise the lord paul says you need to wake up oh, out of your yeah, sleep 2, 000, put, 2, put on watching. the armor put on the armor wake up out of your sleep there is a war going on and I hear the Lord saying, even right now, some of you have been sleeping through the battle. Some of you have been sleeping right mm. through the war that is going on. And God is saying, it's time to engage and it's time to break into this realm. And it's time for some of you to turn off the music, turn off the Netflix, turn off the TV you watch before bed. That's opening up portals. You're bringing them into your bedroom and then you're trying to go to sleep and demons are wreaking all that all out havoc on you literally treating your temple like a playground when you sleep because that house has not been full of the holy ghost it's not been full of the gifts of the spirit it's not full of the fruits of the spirit but your spiritual house which by the way if you're new jesus says we are spiritual houses is biblical and demons dwell in houses and you filled those rooms up with a bunch of compromise you've left the screen door open you've left the front door open and you go to sleep with your doors open and then wonder why you wake up and someone breaks in every night the demon Demons are breaking in because you're not locking up the doors. How do I lock up the doors? You lock them up in prayer. You lock them up by pleading the blood. You lock them up in worship. You begin to evaluate your life. You begin to look at your life and say, I need to begin to shut down these doors so these demons stop attacking me at night. Some of y'all, you wake up way too early to be wrestling demons all night. I used to work at 4 a.m. I didn't have time to be wrestling demons. You need to tell those demons before you go to bed tonight. I don't even got time to wrestle you i don't have time to mess with you so i'm shutting every door because ain't nobody got time for that i am a son of almighty god and i'm ready to begin to go to battle i'm telling you some of you are going to get breakthrough tonight you're going to sleep like you've never i'm telling you i'm not maybe if if you believe i'm telling you some of you are going to sleep like you've never slept before some of you as alexander said are going to get your first prophetic dream some of you are going to actually remember your dream for the first time tonight this is not hype this is not emotionalism this is not religiosity we're not taking up a 45 minute offering we're not trying to get you to come to our church we are telling you if you're tired of wearing your kiddie pool cartoon floaties in the kiddie pool of christianity and you say i'm ready to go in the depths of what god is saying and what god is doing now is your moment now is your time alexander i'm, I'm oh. honest with you bro as you're preaching I'm, I'm saying, when I put my hand up, I'm saying, Lord, I received that. I haven't re been remembering my dreams. I've been getting attacked. Just last week, my wife said, you were sweating all night. You woke up the night, the day that I did, the Friday night I did How to Keep Demons Out. I wrestled all night long. I was soaking wet. I was waking up. I'm right here with you guys saying, Lord, break it off of me. Lord, I want to remember my dreams. Lord, I want to encounter you. Imagine standing in eternity and the Lord saying, you wasted, as Alexander just said, one third of your life not hearing me speak. I mean, imagine that you're on judgment day and the Lord says you wasted one third. I was trying to speak to you at night and you were ignoring right. me and you were allowing all these other voices to try to come. And even insomnia, y'all, I'm telling you, insomnia is a demonic spirit. We'll go into that later, but I'm telling you, God is going to set you free tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. For those of you that... Praise God. Watch this. Listen, John chapter 10. Okay, so watch this. Many of you have been asking... Okay, how is it that the enemy has been attacking me in my dreams when I do have a prayer life? Let, let, let's mm. flip it just a little bit for those of you that aren't carnal, because every so Christian good. isn't carnal. We, we, we 
been speaking to a particular group that have been carnal and worldly and, you know, and been compromising. But but the vast majority of the rest of you um, have been on fire for God. You've been keeping yourself uh, away from sin and you've been trying your best to navigate through this pandemic, especially those of you that are pastors and leaders. And you've been and you've been having like demonic dreams even before the pandemic, and you've been wondering what the heck is going on with me. Watch this. I'm going to show you John chapter 10. Now, I want you to read this from a different lens. All right. Now, I'm going to read this verse to you, John chapter 10, verse 1, but I want you to read it from the lens uh, of dreaming. Watch this. Watch this. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, um, the thief... Mm doesn't come in by the door, but climbs up some other way. Oh, I felt the Holy Spirit on that one. Let me say it again. Let, let me say it again. Watch this. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you. This is Jesus talking. He says, the devil, because the thief, this very same chapter is where we identify who the thief is. It says the devil comes to steal, steal a dream kill to kill god speak to kill your aspirations of what god is telling you and to destroy which means you wake up and you end up in a place of mental mental insanity we'll deal with demon of i'm here to tell somebody the demon of mania is gonna break off of you today the demon of going crazy mental illness demon is gonna go you want to know what let me let me tell you something i recently spoke to somebody i'm gonna get back into this verse i was speaking to somebody on the phone they called the office and while i was talking to them you know they were they were kind of you know asking me for some deliverance for their family members and stuff like that and while i was talking to them you know um they started quoting these like these scriptures at me about what's happening. And they're like, Babylon, the, the greatest fallen and fallen. And next thing you know, the person just went off into some form of theological fanaticism that was neither the Holy Spirit. And it got them to the point where they were at the point of losing their mind mm. because of so many voices in their head about what was happening during this pandemic of God is destroying the world and God is bringing revival. They, they were so confused, mixed with their own immaturity of theology that the enemy started to creep creep in. And while, I'm, while they were talking to me, I could hear the demon of hysteria. The demon of hysteria okay. was beginning to manifest because they were at a point of kind of kind of going crazy and I had to literally literally calm them down speak to them and literally I didn't even have to conduct deliverance I had to just put their thoughts in order putting their thoughts in order you want to know why very simple and I'm going to show it to you because the thief was climbing up wow some other way now watch this this is the reason why many of you have been saying God why I got a prayer life I'm an intercessor I'm a prophet I'm a man, a woman of God. I'm a pastor. I live holy. I, I spend my time in prayer. I pray in tongues. And you're saying, what is going on when I go to sleep? Very simple. Because you have overspent your time guarding the door. But the thief is not coming in through the door. You've been at the door, at the door, guarding the door, protecting the door. You know, you gotta put the you gotta put the wolf back at the door. The Bible says the wow. thief climbs up some other way. So that means the entryway is not in his heart. The heart is the first floor to climb up some other way. It means it has to come in through the window. Mm. The window. Mm. What is the window? The window, according to Luke 11. Say it. Luke 11 says the lamp of the body is the eye. What is the eye? In another version, it says the eyes of your understanding. Where is the devil trying to climb in? In your mind. In your in your imaginations 
That's where the devil is attacking many of you that are dealing with psychosis and all of these crazy, weird, imaginative thoughts. The realm of fantasy, the realm of imagination, the realm of understanding, the realm where God speaks to you with prophetic imagery, where he begins to show you metaphors and similes and symbols of what he wants to tell you. That is where the enemy is infiltrating. Now you know why Paul said, he didn't say cast down sin. Wow. He didn't say cast down your heart. He didn't say cast down your spirit. He said cast down imagination. What does cast down mean? It means to throw over. Throw over what? Throw over what is trying to climb up. It's trying to climb up. You got to cast it down. Where is the demon trying to attack you? In the area of your windows to your house. He's not coming to the door. That's why you've been saying, I just finished fasting. And how is it on the last day of my fast, I had a demonic dream, and I've been I've been having these crazy dreams. Want to know why? Because the devil, the thief, never comes through the door. It climbs up some other way. Now watch this. Watch this. What is the other way? The other way is what the Bible calls footpaths. Mm. The Bible does not say the seed fell on the footpath. It says the seed fell on the footpaths, plural, which means this good ground, there isn't just one way to infiltrate this. There are many different paths that lead to your mind, to your heart. And watch this. The Bible says on these paths are birds. The birds are waiting for seeds to be thrown on these paths. What are those seeds? Very simple, watch this. It says, a person hears the revelation of the kingdom and doesn't understand it. It is like a seed that fell on a mm. footpath. And it says, watch this. Every revelation that you fail to embrace when God is talking to you, birds cut. Oh, feel the anointing. Watch this. Every person that tried to downplay your dreams and tried to downplay your prophetic utterances has act by telling you, my brother, be careful. That was emotion. And then you just say, yeah, well, okay, whatever. Guess what you did? By your rejection of that, you open yourself up to demons. Mm. Why? Because this honor opens wide the door to the demonic. Watch this, watch this. Let me give you one more revelation to connect this dot. Watch this. And the Bible says the birds came. Eat the word. What are the birds? The same chapter says the bird are demons. Watch this, watch this. And then Abraham fell asleep. The Bible says a terrifying darkness gripped Abraham. Watch this. And when he was gripped, the Bible says he had a terrifying nightmare. God spoke to him in the middle of that. And when Abram woke up out of the nightmare, he, the sacrifice, he fell asleep next to the sacrifice that he was offering. It says he fell asleep after he cut the sacrifice in half. He fell asleep and it says a terrifying darkness came upon him. And guess what? When he woke up out of it, there were vultures around the sacrifice. And that is why many of you, you just finished fasting. You just finished praying. You've been seeking God. You go to sleep and a terrifying darkness come. And when you wake up, there's vultures. There's vultures. And the Bible says that when Abram saw the vultures, he had to shoo them away. And God is strengthening some of you that are watching me today. He is strengthening you to rebuke the vultures in your house, to rebuke the vultures in your dreams, to rebuke the vultures in your imaginations. God is strengthening you to be able to remove the nightmare demons and the incubus and succubus away from your sacrifice because you're the living sacrifice. So that that way, God can continue to speak to you.
Woo, come on, somebody. Guys, I'm telling you, number one, we broke 2,000, praise God. I forgot to tell you guys this. At the end of this, we're giving away, Alexander has let me give away three tickets to the webinar, the Dreams Decoded webinar that we have linked in the chat. So three of you are gonna get free admission to the Dreams Decoded, which is gonna go into incredible detail on all of this. So do not leave tonight until you get into the giveaway. It's gonna be questions based on the stream. I'm gonna give you guys a couple ways. Now, some of you are saying, okay, how do we begin to battle or how do we practically begin to go to war? If you don't mind me going into this, Alexander, how do we begin to go to war against these night terrors, against incubus, succubus, which by the way, guys, these are sexual demons that come and literally now I know there's kids and stuff watching but literally take advantage of you is all I'm going to say because it's much more graphic than this they take advantage of you sexually at night I've met many people they say I'm getting attacked sexually at night by demons demons are laying on me I talked to somebody a week ago they said there's a demon laying on me that's incubus and succubus that's the male and the female version of the demons that come and lay on people at night and get them to lust we won't go into great detail on that how do we get rid of it the same way you get rid of every other demon now one thing you guys need to understand about these specific demons because we're not going to go into everyone. Alexander has books. He has hundreds of hours of videos. I have hours and hours on my YouTube of videos of names of demons, of ranks, all that. But I will say this. When you open up a door, whether it's through music, through movies, through watching, through listening, through doing stuff, through trauma, through pain, through abuse, through anger, all the open doors, you don't get to pick what demons come through those doors. So some of you have gotten these specific demons that function a specific way through these open doors. Now, a couple things I wanna say that I believe is a way to break the power. Now, get your notepads, whatever you can right now get your notes out you might need to come rewatch this i'm going to give you these super quick for the sake of time i'm going to just shoot a bunch of verses at you that you can begin to say before you go to bed to put on that shield so that demons won't be able to infiltrate your spirit while you sleep remember how did jesus now well, before go for it go for it go for it but what but, but watch this go for it. let me let me just read 23 dream demons that might be yes, attacking yes. them. I'm not going to get into them. Yes. But if they identify with any of these 23, then they can begin to implement yes. the prayers and the strategies that you're going to give them. So Perfect. first and foremost, um, if, you're, if, if, if lately you've been having a migraine headaches, mm. migraine headaches and tension headaches, they could be the presence of a demon. Okay. Paralyzing demons where a demon has you paralyzed in the bed. All right, where well, you feel that you you trapped and you can't move. Suffocating demon. A suffocating demon, it means that you can't, you feel like you're suffocating, like something is pressing on your chest and you, you feel like you can't breathe. There's something sitting on your chest uh, and you feel like you can't breathe. Choking demon. A demon is choking you at whatever times of the day it's choking you. Um, intimidating demon, which means this demon is intimidating or tormenting you, tormenting you. Okay knocking demon like 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 knocking which means this is a demon that doesn't let you sleep but it's kind of like it's just knocking on your closet door like and you wake up like what the heck is that did nobody mm. hear that or running up and down the hallway of your house or banging on your window or tapping on your window or tapping on the back the bed the master bed the, the back the bed board behind you just kind of kind of tapping that or making the bed go up and down so that is a knocking demon which is this is a demon just trying to try to uh let you know that it's there okay apparition demon an apparition means you wake up and there's a dark shadow in Come your on. there's a dark shadow in your room there's just a dark shadow or you see a shadow moving um in the hallway under the door because in the hallway there's a uh, you have a night light and you see some kind of some kind of shadow or you see something that's darker than darkness which means there's no light in your room but there is a silhouette mm. of a spirit that is darker than the room okay insomnia demon demon assigned to make you not sleep Incubus and succubus, these are demons impersonating uh, a male or a female. Um, and they begin to fondle you. You feel like you're being fondled. And to get, maybe not graphic, but some of you are beginning to have, we were called, please excuse us, but you're here to get set free. Some of you begin to have sexual fantasy yep. um, and wet dreams. We will call yep. them wet dreams out of nowhere and you're living holy and next thing you know you have a wet dream. Please excuse the word. I don't know what Be other real. term that they Be use. Okay. All right. Um, 
uh, terror demons, demons terrorizing you, and you're fear, you're gripped with fear. You feel like you're gonna die. Like, you're gonna die. Okay. Um, uh, uh, chasing demons, where you keep dreaming that you're being chased in a dream, and there's no one there, but you find yourself. You're just kind of running and running and running and running. And when you look, nobody's chasing you, but you, or you're being chased in your dreams. Okay. This next one is a big one. This one is called monitoring spirits. These are demons on assignment that hang in the windows, hang on your lights, and they just look down, monitoring you, mm. writing information, writing information about your current status so that they can report to their superiors in hell so they can begin to strategize on what they need to do to attack you, monitoring spirits. Also, if you've been dabbling in witchcraft and you've been work with your friends and tapping into all of that stuff, these are demons sent by witches and warlocks to go in your room to monitor what you're doing and then give them information. And when they see you, they pre supposed to be presupposed telling you about things you did last night and they got the information from a demon. Okay, watch your spirits. Watch your spirits. These are spirits that particularly go inside and begin to watch everything that you do so that way they can begin to know how to attack you. Okay, animal spirit. Mm. Animal spirits, it means you're beginning to dream with rats, roaches, yep. alligators. You know, you're having all forms, spiders, uh, all forms of animal animals popping up in your dreams or minotaurs, centaurs, hybrid demons, Nephilim, or grotesque animals that are uh, a mixture of a dog face and a leopard body. These are particular animal spirits. Okay, spirit husband. Say it. Isaiah, Isaiah mentioned soul tie. Every soul tie that doesn't get a dress now becomes a spirit husband or spirit wife in the future. Now, what does that mean? These are demons that dwell in your fantasy of wanting to get married and they go to bed with you at night, making you ponder about what it would be like to be married and you're having all of this intimacy in your mind and or oh, what it would have been like to be with brother so-and-so in the church who's single, I wish we could get together, sister so-and-so, I'm single. And what happens is every night you go to sleep and there it comes again. There You start fantasizing about this this personality that doesn't even exist of what you believe to be what you want God to give you. And next thing you know, a demon becomes attached to that or it impersonates who you used to be. So mm. that way you're being intimate with your present spouse, but you're making believe and imagining that they're your first boyfriend or your first girlfriend, spirit husband, spirit wife. Okay. A dream blocking spirit, phobia spirits. Lust demons, fantasy demons, dream catching spirits, harassing demons, um, anxiety demons, and panic spirits. Panic spirits that make you panic, especially in this season yes. of COVID-19. Many of you have been having panic dreams, panic dreams. So these are 23 demons that could potentially be affecting you. And as Isaiah leads us, we're going to begin to lead you on how you could get free. Okay, so oh, first of all, that was incredible. And a lot of you, I see, I know as he's preaching, I'm reading the chat. A lot of you are saying, that's exactly, I've never heard it this way. And so we're revealing these. Now, let me tell you a couple ways. We know Jesus directly. And remember, guys, we're doing a giveaway here in a little bit for three to the webinar. But guys, I'm telling you, there's 2,000 of you on here. I don't know why after this whole thing's done tonight, he doesn't have several hundred of you sign up for the thing. I can't imagine why, okay? So there should be a couple hundred of us signed up for the webinar after this stream because we're going to go into greater detail during that webinar. Alexander's going to go into greater detail on all this. But let me just say this. Here's a couple verses I'm going to give you. You can write them down that you can combat demonic powers before you go to bed. These are practical verses. How did Jesus fight the devil? He fought him with the word of God. So these are things you can do now, obviously, we need to close doors. As we said, we have hundreds of hours of content 
on deliverance, on breakthrough. There's books, all the resources you need. Some of you are asking, what about this? What about this? We've covered all of that in our previous videos. We've covered the armor of God. We've covered all this stuff. So let me give you some verses. If you want to write some of these down, I'm going to go really quick. It's going to take me a minute here. This is how you could speak over yourself. I told you guys last week, the way I battle anxiety attacks is through verses. You speak verses and it breaks it. Okay. Proverbs 324. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sweet, your sleep will be sweet. That's Proverbs 324. Psalms 4:8. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety in my sleep. That's Psalms 4:8. Psalms 91:5. You will not fear. I feel the Holy Ghost. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. The Bible talks about the fiery darts or arrows of the enemy. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us, you should all know this one, a spirit of fear, but power, love, and self-control. James 4.7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Psalms 91, one through four, he, dwell, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Come on, pestilence, that's coronavirus. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings, you'll find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Proverbs 19, 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life and whoever has it, listen up guys, whoever has the fear of the Lord rests or sleeps satisfied and he will not be visited by harm. I feel the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 6, 22, when you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will talk with you. Psalms 1, 27, 2, it is in vain that you raise up early and go to late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives rest to his beloved, he gives sleep. Psalms 121.5, the Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade in your right hand. The sun shall not strike you in the day, nor the moon strike you by the night. Okay, we don't have time to go into all these, these are crazy. Je last one, Jeremiah 31.26, at this I awoke and looked, and my sleep was pleasant to me. Do you guys see how many verses there are that talk about rest and breakthrough while you're sleeping? Why is there, I gave you what, 10 to 15 there? Why is there so many verses that talk about breakthrough and rest and sleep? I'll tell you why. Because when you're in the battle, when you're on the front line spiritually, it's hard to have a good night's rest when you're always battling. I'm telling you guys, mm. God is going to set you free. God is going to deliver you. I think one of the greatest portals especially at nighttime to demonic spirits is anger or unforgiveness with your spouse the bible says this in ephesians 4 26 be angry and sin not do not let the sun go down on your wrath neither give a place for the devil here's what paul is clearly saying when anger lingers from one day to the next you give a place for the devil i tell people this when you're arguing you've all had that 3m argument with your husband with your wife if you don't resolve it, let me tell you guys, this will change your life. If you don't resolve it before the sun goes down or before you go to sleep, you might wake up with a third person in your bed named the devil. What it literally is saying is when there's unconfessed or anger or bitterness or resentment or anything that's un, um, unresolved at nighttime, if the sun goes down and there's an unresolved issue in your marriage, in a relationship, you give an invite for the devil to sleep in your bed. The Bible says you give a place or you give a spot for the enemy. And I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to wake up with demons in my bed. I'm not trying to invite demons into my bed. I need to make sure that I break that anger and I break that spot for the enemy. Another major one is your tongue. Your tongue is a major open door to demonic powers. The Bible says the tongue can bless or the tongue could curse. And it's the words that we speak, words that were spoken over us that give demons opportunity, especially at nighttime, to enter into our lives. That's in Proverbs 8.21, the power of life and death. So we need to be careful that we're not opening up specific doors to demonic powers to be able to influence and be revealed. And I think a lot of it is these spirits are being revealed at night. And we're going to go in here in, in a minute, unless, Alexander, you have anything else we want to add, we're going to begin to pray, and we're going to break these demonic spirits off of you guys. I feel that there's some people watching me. You, you tuned in today because it's not about you. Your mm. children are being tormented in their dreams. There are some of you um, right that haven't 
uh, realize that during this pandemic, obviously there, there is fear being released upon the earth, but there has been specific targeted prayers against your children, against some of your younger children, and they're having dreams, um, and they're waking up, and they're screaming, and they're crying, and they're having, and you don't know, you're literally at the wit's end because no one talks about Maybe they do talk about dreams to some degree, but no one is really talking about uh, children uh, dealing with some stuff. I hear the Spirit of God saying that for some of you, it's a specific assignment by a coven within your region that is targeting the children um, within your region, and the children are being targeted. It's a coven. They are real. They are real. The, the, the covens are taking advantage of the pandemic to begin to add more targeted fear against specific, specific, uh, specific families. But I see the spirit of God saying that there's a major flood of glory coming up and it's going to raise up a standard. I see a flood of glory coming invading your children's room and it's raising up a standard and it's going to push back the demons of terror your children have are being terrorized in their dream they're being filled with fear they're being filled with fear and what's crazy is they're getting attacked after you finish praying for them and you prayed and you and you did your daily prayer with your children and now your children are being attacked. God is saying he's going to begin to, he is sending a flood. Now the reason why he has to send a flood, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard. The reason why he sends a flood is because you got no time to be going after one demon, two come demon, on. three demon. A flood takes the whole crew out. The flood comes and washes them all at one time out. Receive this for your children. If a matter of fact, I pray this right now. Young man, young lady, I command every demon attacking you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Night demon, terror demon, demon of phobia, demon of fear, demon of afraid of dying, demon of COVID-19, demon of pandemic, any demon attacking you at night, shadows in your room, shadows in your closet, whispering voices, imaginary friends attacking you at night. I come against you now in the name of Jesus. You loose that child now. You loose them now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, mama, now, papa, I need you to raise your hand. I need you to worship. I need you to enter to see it. I need you to release the glory over your children now in the name of Jesus. And I decree that demon goes. Demon in the woods, go, 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 go. Demon on the property, on their property. Leave their property now in the name of Jesus. Angels, I release you to that child's room. I release you to that young lady's room. I release you to that young man's room now in the name of Jesus. Now, 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 now. Receive it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, mama, some of you are crying right now. Go ahead and cry because God is delivering Come your on. baby. Papa, Papa, you're praying in tongues. Receive fresh, fresh, fresh glory. I decree the devil can't have your children. I decree every child gets set free from demonic dreams now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now and receive great glory, fresh oil, fresh oil for your life now in Jesus' name. Jesus, mighty name. Man. And I want to say, too, some of them are coming in through the cartoons. I think a lot of people say, well, it's not fair that the enemy attack, attacks children. Here's what you guys need to understand about the demonic realm. Fair, the word fair does not exist in the devil's dictionary. The devil's dictionary does not have the word fair. The enemy is fighting and he does not care about fair. So there are some doors that need to be in to close. As you're praying, Alexander, people are just spamming the chat saying, my eight-year-old has dreams of our whole family dying. I saw somebody say, my two-year-old has nightmares every night. Right now, after tonight, we break it now. Because you are their parent, you have, according to God's word and the way generational curses work, which maybe another day we'll do a whole uh, podcast on generational curses, the way that they work, you have the legal right to break it. If you look at any place in the Bible where a child got delivered, their parents always brought them to Jesus. So you have the authority and the power to break it. And right now, I just want to pray over some of you that are getting choked at night. Some of you that have that demon of insomnia. Some of you have that succubus and incubus that's laid on you. You've messaged me saying that spirit lays on you tonight. 
We command right now in Jesus' name, every yes. demon of incubus, succubus, yes. every insomnia demon, every choking mm. demon, every knocking demon, every demon of distraction, every demon of paralyzation, every demon of loss of breath or where you can't breathe that's choking, we command Shaka now that to be broken in Jesus' name. We break the contracts. We break the assignment. Yes. Some of you need to not just mm. speak those verses tonight. You need to go up in your bedroom where your bed's at, and you need to begin to command any lingering, any familiar, or any demonic mm. powers that are dwelling in your home to leave in ah. Jesus' name. That your home My is God. not their property. That your spiritual house is not their dwelling place. You need to begin to even renounce right now uh, soul ties. You need to begin to renounce yes. spiritual wives, spiritual husbands, that reoccurring yes. dream of that ex-girlfriend, that ex-husband, that ex-wife. We break it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus I know, name. listen, your church might not talk about this. Your pastor might not talk about this. This is real, and we break it now. Know. It's time that we stop being in denial and it's time we get Ooh. deliverance you cannot be in denial and have deliverance at the same time you cannot have your dignity and have deliverance you need to break out of it and say tonight i don't care how Ooh. old i am i don't care Ooh. how young i am I refuse uh, to have another night of wrestling with these chaotic demons that are distracting uh, me from my destiny. We speak against uh, now uh, every uh, demon that's blocking dreams. Every guys, why don't you what don't you think why do you think it's called a dream catcher? Why do you think the thing that the witches use and the warlocks use are called dream catchers? They literally snatch up your dreams. We come against now that dream catching demon in Jesus, in Jesus name. name. Every spirit that is snatching up your dream every spirit that's trying to hold back the dreamers every spirit that's trying to get you to forget every bird that's trying to come and steal your word we rebuke it. and I hear the Lord saying too there are some of you that allow people in your life as the word says Alexander was preaching about they say that they will come and step on the word the bird steals it and the people step on it there's people in your life that have been stepping on your word there's people in your life that think you're crazy for thinking deliverance is wrong and being here and the Lord is saying it's time to remove people that that have been stepping on your word. It's time to remove. And I, I'm telling you, you're gonna get off of this. And you're gonna call up and say, I got delivered. I got breakthrough tonight. They were talking about demons. You're gonna start telling them what we were talking about. And here's what they're gonna say. Oh, that stuff's not real. And oh, that's not a big deal. And don't worry about that spiritual stuff. Just stay in the scripture. Even though we gave you over a hundred verses tonight, that person is trying to step on the word and I come against now every person that's trying yeah. to step on the deliverance, yeah. that's trying to step on the word, on. and that's trying to tell you that it's just come bad on. pizza. Right now, you will dream again. Yeah, you will sleep again. Those of you that yes. have gotten tired, that spirit yes. that's made you weary, we bind yes. that demonic power in Jesus' name yeah, and we command it to cool. leave and never come back in Jesus' name. Some of you are yeah. having... Demons attacking you in your dreams because the wrong people laid hands on you. Come on. You've had unauthorized hands laid on you. God is saying that his hand is coming down and he is severing that connection between you and at false impartation. Some of you received a false impartation. Some of you had wrong hands mm. laid on you. Some of you have been scrolling the internet, watching different Say prophetic, it. prophetic it. live videos. Oh, I ain't playing today. You've been watching various prophetic words and people prophesying, and you don't know where half these jokers live, and you don't know their lifestyle, and you've just been, I'm just receiving from the man of God. I'm just receiving from the woman of God. And God is saying, ever since you open your spirit up Ooh. to that false impartation, your dream life has been sabotaged. Dream sabotage demon out now in the name of Jesus. Demon sabotaging, demon twisting their dream, demon rearranging their dreams. Demons of dream confusion, dream confusion. You come out of the now. Dreaming demons of confusion that began because they received the wrong impartation. I break that false impartation, false Holy Spirit, False prophetic word, false, false glory, false. I, I break it off of you now in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, you need to repent for opening yourself up to that. 
Lift your hands and say, God, forgive me for receiving that false impartation. I, my, I let my guard down. Go ahead, say it, say it, say it, say, Lord, forgive me. I let my guard down and I receive. Ever since that I, I encountered yep. this particular yep. ministry, my dreams yep. have been off. And Lord, forgive me for not listening to you, Holy Spirit, when you begin to sound the alarm inside of me and say something is off, something is off. But Lord, I was so desperate for a word. I was so desperate for a touch. And ever since then, Lord, I've been having these wacky, demonic, false, false dreams. So Lord, I repent. I repent right now. Now I want you to say this after me, those of you that are watching. Any demon that came in my mind as a result of that ministry, I order you, get out of my mind, get out of my heart, get out of my body, and get out of my dreams now. Go, go in Jesus' mighty name. Leave me now. I order you, come out of my imagination, every demon. Now say it. Come on, those of you that are watching, I'm going to lead you to a self-deliverance right now. Say with me. Every demon hiding in my subconscious, hiding in my imagination, I command you by the authority of Jesus' name, go. Leave now in Jesus, in Jesus' name. I want you to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, invade. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, occupy those empty areas now. Set me free. I receive your ministry right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Receive, receive a fresh touch from the, from the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, Amen. thank ahead, you, Isaiah. Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you guys, listen, we do not sit here and think, oh, it's no big deal. There was 2,000, there's 1,900 of you on right now. It's a huge deal. We are extremely grateful. I'm telling you, listen, I'm not saying this because this is our show. There is nobody doing this, guys. Talking about the stuff we're talking about tonight, I don't know anybody talking and dealing with this. And so I am grateful that the Lord is speaking to us in this hour. Alexander, I want to tell you, you know, you're a brother to me. You know that we're friends on Amen. another level besides just the ministry. I am extremely grateful. I don't have words to say how grateful I am that you've been on here, that you poured into us for an hour and a half. As you know, I started out the broadcast by saying, anytime you want to come on, it's completely open <laughs> to you. I love you, bro. I love the flow. Guys, I want to say this. I'm going to bless him tonight regardless. I don't care if you guys give. I don't care if you don't give. I'm blessing him. Help me bless him, guys. There's a link right there. We're not doing 30 minutes. We're not going to talk about reaping and sowing. There's a link right there. Double click it and just sow. We say it every week. Don't dine and dash. If God touched you, I was touched. That's why I'm sowing. So you guys might sow. I'm sowing into him regardless of whatever comes in. I'm still going to sow the seed because I believe in what God is saying and what God is doing. So guys, please. Become a monthly partner. Partner with us tonight. All the links are there. I want to say this again. The Dreams Decoded webinar is the link right there. I've already tested it on my phone. It works on the comments. If you want to know more and you want to get deeper teaching on this, I'm telling yes. you guys, I'm not, no one's paying me to say this. I'm not saying this because he's a friend of mine. Nobody is teaching on this stuff. Nobody is talking about demons that attack you at night. Get in this webinar, register tonight i'm telling you do it tonight don't wait oh we're gonna do it next week do it tonight guys you're not gonna regret it all the info is right there when you double click that link it'll tell you about it it'll give you all the steps on how to get in the video when it goes live and how to get in the webinar but please he's come on here he didn't ask me for anything he didn't say oh are you gonna pay me this are you gonna do this none of that he didn't ask me for anything we're doing this because we believe in this ministry. So help us partner with the ministry financially tonight if you're gonna be all grumpy like oh my gosh they're asking for money then don't, then don't do anything, okay? You could just get blessed and be one of those people because uh, there's other people that give every week like Yvonne Tony Hill who just gave that are going to give regardless of what you think. But I'm asking you tonight, partner with us. We're still going to do the giveaway. There's 1,800 of you. Do not get off. Three of you are going to get in the webinar for free. Alexander said, look, yes. we're going to give away three of these tonight. So guys, before I let, after I let him go, I'm going to still do a giveaway. I'm going to bring my middle daughter. She didn't get on the stream Tuesday. She was so mad. She said, Daddy, can I please go on the stream on Friday? So I'm going to bring my middle daughter in. We're going to do the giveaway. We're going to read all the donations. I'm going to hang out and talk to y'all. We're going to chat about this week after we let him go. But Alexander, if there's anything you want to plug, any websites, talk about your books, it's fully whatever you want to do. I have your, also, let me say this before he talks real quick. 
I've linked his page in the description. So if you're asking, how do I find his Facebook? It's linked in the description. All you have to do is look up. When the video's done, it's going to be there. It's going to stay there. So all the links are going to be there. We'll be on Charisma on Friday. Charisma, iTunes, all that. I'm going to put his webinar link on Charisma's website. So when you go to Charisma and our page, his link will be there. So I'm going to have the links everywhere. So don't make an excuse like, oh, I couldn't find the link. I'm, I'm, I'm blasting it everywhere, y'all. You'll be able to get the link, okay? <laughs> but is there anywhere else I could find you or you could link him to? Well, really right now, my emphasis right now is because we have been in so much lockdown because of the pandemic, especially those of you that are in California, New York City, we already have gone through this lockdown thing. and um, But now there's a, there's a surge happening on the rest of the in the rest of the country. So my emphasis right now has been helping people get delivered in their dreams. Come Why? On. Because you're going to be spending a long amount of time at home in this season while your states are presently doing their presupposed quarantines or lockdown. I want you to register. I want you to register um, the information is pinned in the comment. It says Dream Decoded Webinar. I haven't released this yet. I'm supposed to release this tomorrow, but I wanted to do it here first for those of you, because not only do we want to confront the demons in your dreams, I want to teach you on how to begin to identify and understand when God is also speaking in your dreams and how to um interpret your dreams not only that my wife mama pagani will be joining me Come in on. this webinar so she is an absolutely anointed in this so i want you to register the link is in the description pinned there and here's what i'm going to do we're giving away three free uh giveaways to whomever uh isaiah feels the lord wants to give it to but watch this um those of you if you're going to register tonight Tonight, you're going to register. Here's what we're going to do. The the the, uh, the webinar is at 7 o'clock p.m. my time, but it's 5 o'clock p.m. Um, on the West Coast. If, if enough of you register from California, I promise you, I will change the time. That will make it 6 p.m. So that way you guys, in case you're still at work, you won't miss the first hour. Mm. We need those of you from the West Coast. Yes. We will be able to, I will move it to 6 p.m. because we're predominantly on the East Coast and a large percentage of our following is East Coast. So 7 o'clock works for us, but that's 5 o'clock for you. And many there of you might hours, still be three at three hours work. time difference. There's a three hour time difference. But I tell you this, um, um, or rather three hour. If you, if you, register from the west coast if enough people from register from the west coast i will move the time so that way you could be able to watch it at 6 p.m your time and that way both east coast and west coast could be able to Come join on. and you can be able to get the information that you need so i really uh you know how to find me but i really want you i really want you to register because i want to walk with you through this pandemic in the area of your dreams. Now, we can't do it today, but um, on my page, we do live dream interpretation. Now, we mm. can't do it tonight, but maybe we'll do another show. 